For most people, when remembering the Hart Foundation, Bret Hart is the first name that instantly springs to mind. While the hitman found worldwide fame after his tenure in the Hart Foundation, his tag partner Jim Nat Hart would fall in and out with the WWE. His personal issues kept getting in the way of keeping consistent employment with Vince McMahon and he was rehired again and again as favours to Stu Hart. It wouldn't be completely honest to say that Jim Nat Hart's wrestling career was absolutely stellar and groundbreaking, but it sure was interesting. When paired up with Bret Hart, Jim complimented the hitman well, being the big bruiser while the hitman was the agile technician. Let's take a look at the life and the career of the Anvil. Jim Nethard competed in track and field events while in school and he was good, really good, particularly in the shot put. Being a star athlete in high school, Nethard famously received tryouts with the Oakland Raiders and Dallas Cowboys in the 70s but was unsuccessful in making either team. It's been reported that Jim Nethart was already taking amphetamines before receiving his tryouts. Nethart would battle his demons for more than 40 years. Jim Nethart travelled to Calgary to train with Stu Hart in an attempt to get involved in the world of professional wrestling. He married into the Hart family when he wed Stu's daughter Ellie and he gained his nickname the Anvil after winning an anvil throwing competition which Stu Hart paid for him to enter. The tough as nails Stu Hart grew close to Jim Nethart, who he lovingly referred to as that big bastard. The Anvil wrestled for Stu Hart's Stampede Wrestling in Calgary from 1978 to 1985 where he would become a two time Stampede International Tag Team Champion. During this time the Anvil also worked for Georgia Championship Wrestling, Mid-South Championship Wrestling and Championship Wrestling from Florida in the US and he also got some work in New Japan Pro Wrestling due to the relationship between the company and Stampede. Vince McMahon purchased Stampede from Stu Hart with Vince promising that he would sign Bret Hart, Davey Boy Smith, the Dynamite Kid and Jim Nethart and give them all pushes in the WWF. It wasn't long before Bret Hart suggested that he and Jim are put together in a tag team and the original incarnation of the Hart Foundation was formed. The Hale Hart Foundation and the babyface British Bulldogs would go on to tear it up in the house show circuit, putting on matches that the main eventers only dreamed they were capable of putting on. The Hearts defeated the Bulldogs in a famous match in January 1987 to win the WWF tag titles, with Dynamite Kid being so injured that Davy Boy had to carry him to the ring. For more information about this check out my Dynamite Kid video. While it was a tragedy for the Bulldogs, it was a triumph for the Hearts. By the end of 1987 it was clear that Vince McMahon saw Bret Hart as the bigger star of the team and after losing the belts to Strike Force, Bret was moved into a singles program with Bad News Brown for most of 1988. During this time, the Anvil had a few intercontinental title shots against Ravishing Rick Rude coming up short against the Ravishing One. Bret's singles push was stopped temporarily and the Hart Foundation would return to tag action at the beginning of 1989, this time as baby faces. The Hart Foundation started feuding with tag champions Demolition. At SummerSlam 1990 on August 27th, the Hart Foundation won the tag titles for a second time in a 2 out of 3 falls match which was as good as what it could have been. The pop they received though was huge. In October of 1990, a match was taped for Saturday night's main event between the Hart Foundation and the Rockers where the Rockers would win the tag titles. One of the ropes snapped during the match and with three out of the four guys in the ring relying heavily on all ropes for much of their offence, the match ended up as awful as you could imagine. The Rockers won the belts, but NBC decided to cut the show from 90 minutes to 60 minutes at the last second, leaving the WWF in the position of having to scrap a match, and unfortunately it was the tag clash that was scrapped. The titles thus went back to the Hart Foundation and the match never happened. The match would be released later on DVD releases though. The Hart Foundation lost the belts for real this time to the Nasty Boys at WrestleMania 7. It was now time for Bret's single push to start once again and Jim Nethart was moved into a colour commentator role which was awful for him. He was eventually then let go from the WWF. Jim would return shortly after in the New Hart Foundation, a team consisting of the Anvil and Owen Hart. Jim's personal battles with substance abuse though put a halt to the team and he was fired from the WWF. 
He was fired on the 16th of February 92 after refusing to take a drug test and throwing a television monitor backstage. Between 1992 and 1993, the Anvil found himself in Eastern Championship Wrestling and also had a short stint in WCW. He teamed up briefly with the Junkyard Dog in WCW and he even had a match against the Sandman in Eastern Championship Wrestling. After Stu Hart put a phone call into Vince McMahon asking for a favour, Ned Hart found himself again employed by the WWF. Jim showed up again in the WWF in 1994, joining forces with a heel Owen Hart as the King of Hearts would enter into a feud with Bret. He returned at the 1994 King of the Ring, solidifying his role as a heel by helping Owen win the tournament and also refusing to help Brett as he took a beatdown in a match against Diesel. In less than a year, Jim Nathart self-destructed once again and was fired again for no showing live events, likely due to his drug issues. According to Brett, Nathart was supposed to team with Owen and win the WWF Tag Team Title Tournament at WrestleMania 11 in 1995. It ended up being Yokozuna taking that spot. On the July 6th, 1996 episode of Superstars, Jim Nathart returned as the masked heel Who. Yes, his name was Who. W H O. Who. <laughs> it seemed the gimmick was simply created for Vince and Jerry to make poor jokes on commentary. He would once again get released in September 1996 and go on to work independent dates. And then, surprise surprise, Jim Nathart would make one last return to the WWF and surprise surprise, it was Stu Hart putting in a phone call once again to Vince McMahon to get him another chance. Bret Hart was suddenly on fire as the top heel in the WWF and he brought in his family members as backup to create the latest incarnation of the Hart Foundation. This led to a highlight in Jim's career, main eventing the Canadian Stampede pay-per-view from Calgary as a part of the 10-man tag match. The Hart Foundation received a hero's welcome in Calgary as they battled Team USA in the main event. Brett's relationship with the WWF fell apart after the Montreal screw job and Nethart asked for his release so he could go to WCW. McMahon agreed, but Jim was humiliated on his way out of the company. The irony that Jim was rehired so many times and then he asked for his release shouldn't be lost on anyone. Shawn Michaels and Hunter would invite Jim to join DX, only to beat him up seconds later in the ring. Eventually they would spray paint WCW on his back. It was just a complete burial by DX and Vince McMahon at this point. Jim Nathart made his first big money deal when he joined WCW but the run was a disaster. He teamed up with Old Heart Foundation stablemate the British Bulldog, where the two were rarely used. His final match for WCW was on the September 26th episode of WCW Saturday Night where Nethart and the British Bulldog lost to NWOB team members Stevie Ray and Vincent. Nethart was released from the company shortly after. Jim said of working in WCW, I really like WCW, I've never made so much money to do absolutely nothing. To go to these things and get paid a really decent salary and then not wrestle? It's like, wow, do these guys even know what they're doing? I get paid a lot of money just to stand here in the locker room and drink beer at night. Jim would go on to make a one-off appearance for the WWE during their Raw 15 year special where he took part in a battle royal. He was also a reoccurring character on the Total Divas TV show where his daughter Natalia was a main cast member. Throughout his career, Jim went to rehab twice, both times paid by the WWE. If you look up videos of the Anvil during later life, you could always tell that something wasn't quite right. It's no secret that Jim was very heavy into drugs, and looking at videos of him posted in later life, it's painfully obvious that he was into some harder drugs. It's been reported numerous times by numerous wrestlers that Jim Nathart was into crack cocaine, amongst other things. In 2010, the Anvil was arrested on two counts of possession of a controlled substance, two counts of trafficking a controlled substance, one count of grand theft and one count of burglary of a home. The police report said Nathart was yelling outside a gas station and was swallowing several pills. The name on the label of the Oxycontin pills and methadone were prescribed to someone else. The sheriff's office said the person whose name was on the pills had reported that her medication was stolen from her home. He was sentenced to 5 months and 29 days in jail. 
As his health had been getting worse and worse and he found it more difficult to perform daily routines, Jim the Avil Nethard died on August 13th, 2018. Reports indicate that he suffered a fall inside his Florida home. He was 63 years old when he passed away. It was soon revealed that the Avil had been suffering from Alzheimer's. Wife Ellie said that Jim got out of bed to adjust the thermostat on the night he passed away, but then he fell and hit a wall and slumped to the ground. Brother-in-law Ross Hart believed Jim suffered a seizure before he fell and banged his head. According to the Pasco County Sheriff's Office, the fall killed him. Brett said of Jim's passing, I love Jim as more than a brother. He was a one-of-a-kind character. The most beautiful thing about Jim was how on the longest days and in the most miserable times, he could always make you laugh. He'll always be the anvil, the big rhino, the tank. He was the best friend I ever had and I owe him for everything good that ever came my way as a pro wrestler. When it came to wrestling teams like Andre and Haku, the British Bulldogs, the Nasty Boys, Demolition and the Rockers, the Hart Foundation could work with any team and have the best match on the card. Jim's legacy carries on with his daughter Natalia becoming a cornerstone in the WWE women's division, a highly respected competitor and a mentor to the other women in the company. Jim was extremely proud of his daughter's accomplishments in the WWE. This year Jim the Anvil Nethart was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame along with Brett as the Hart Foundation. While the induction will be remembered for all the wrong reasons, it was good to see Natalia induct her father. You can tell she thinks very highly of her dad. <laughs>